The Ghost and Mr. Chicken came out in 1966, telling the story of Luther Hayes, an aspiring reporter who gets an opportunity to spend a night in the town's haunted house. So does Don Knotts deliver? And why do I love this movie so much? Let's find out. All right, a little bit of backstory. One of the TV shows that defined my childhood was The Andy Griffith Show. Whenever there was an Andy Griffith marathon on TV land, my dad was there, ready to record all eight hours on VHS. I can remember watching hours of those reruns as a kid. Now, the premise of the show couldn't be simpler. Small town of Mayberry, a super laid back sheriff, and his high strung clumsy deputy were in charge of policing the quietest town in America. Probably the worst thing that ever happened in Mayberry was when Opie accidentally shot a bird with a slingshot. Please, why, why? Devastating. Anyways, season four, episode two, The Haunted House. It's the third highest rated episode in the series on IMDb, and for good reason, because the scaredy cat Barney Fife is at his best, being forced to retrieve a baseball in the haunted Rimshaw house. Don Knotts liked creating this episode so much, he wanted to do a project that expanded on all the spooky themes. Now fast forward three years and the ghost and Mr. Chicken came to the big screen. Now, I said I love this movie. Why? The time period, story, and the characters make the perfect setup for an extremely funny, old-fashioned ghost story. And it all starts with Don Knotts, one of the greatest comedy actors of all time. I love him as Barney Fife, and this is essentially him playing the same character. He's eccentric and very awkward sometimes, but he's an endearing character. For example, one of his classic habits is when he's angry and he tries to act tough, but you could just see right through him. I don't care how many times he does it, it's objectively funny. He's also a master at creating awkwardness. He's very subtle with his approach, but it becomes overwhelming in seconds. There's this one scene with him and the love interest, Alma, and they're talking on the porch together. After a lull in the conversation, he whips out his hands and does the lamest karate chops you've ever seen in your life. It's like something you see a fifth grader do for attention, but it's a grown man. Somehow, Alma finds this interesting and not cringing, but the point is, it's hilarious. That's one of the things about Don Knotts. His physical comedy was top tier. He's a string bean of a man, so whether he's trying to puff his chest out or shaking in his sleeping bag, you have to appreciate how good this guy is. There's so many other instances of his awkward behavior, it's painful to watch, but executed so well. One other example is when he's addressing the town in a public speech, and his notes just float away. You've never seen a more realistic look of pure terror on a person's face. Anyone who hates public speaking can relate and it's comedy gold. As the story progresses, Luther has to end up proving in the court of law he wasn't making up any of the terrifying sights and sounds he experienced inside this haunted house. Luther is an underdog, and you can't help but root for the guy. At a point, Luther! How about the other characters? Well, they have this dialed in too. Everyone's role makes sense, even if they're only in one scene. The movie is so rewatchable because almost every moment has some sort of joke or visual gag. Some highlights include two bickering old ladies who get hung up on the most random details. It's eye-rolling, but we all know people like that. I wouldn't go near there for $100. I wouldn't go near there for 200 300 4 5 6 Girls. Then there's this one scene in a hotel where the bellhop is dealing with a completely busted elevator and it doesn't go too well for Luther. So yeah, it's funny, but this is a horror movie, right? So is it scary? Well, this is a pretty brutal ghost story. The legend goes that old man Simmons stabbed his wife in the throat during an argument, hightailed it to the upstairs pipe organ to play with blood dripping from his hands, and then committed suicide by throwing himself out the window. 
They say the ghost of Old Man Simmons still climbs the tower to play the organ at midnight. I mean, come on, it's a genuinely creepy story. And seeing Luther tiptoe through the haunted house waiting for the organ to play at midnight is enjoyable to watch. There's even some pretty good jump scares scattered through the movie too. Now, is it Haunting of Hill House scary? No, but the mystery of the Simmons family is definitely spooky enough for the month of October. The great thing is the movie is really accessible. Your young kids could watch this with you and even adults who don't care too much for horror. Last but not least, there's something really important in this movie. It's called the music. The soundtrack is incredibly catchy and it's all thanks to Vic Mizzy. You might recognize one of his most famous songs. The main title melody is spooky and gets inside your head. And here's the funny thing. As I went through the entire soundtrack, I realized almost every song was just a rendition of the main theme melody, except it's slowed down or sped up, played with a different cadence or different instruments entirely. But somehow, each version fits perfectly with the different scenes. And when you hear the haunted organ play for the first time, it's awesome. There's very few movies I come across where the music adds so much. It's essentially a character in itself. Thank you, Vic. All right, I've hyped up this movie a bit more than most probably would. It's 55 years old after all. But what can I say? I'm a sucker for the time period, the style of humor, and the simple ghost story. And I didn't spoil it. So if you haven't seen it, go check out this movie. And if you already have, I want to know your thoughts. There's a lot of scenes I didn't talk about, so I'm sure I've missed some great parts. Last, of course, hit that like button and please subscribe. It really helps me out. I've got plenty more spooky content in the works, so stay tuned.